Welcome back to the second half hour of the Factor Uncensored. Today we are celebrating the ladies. We're dedicating the rest of the show to honor International Women's Day. We're starting this special edition off talking to some trailblazers here in the greater Houston area. We have Mitch Guillory here who's no stranger to us here on the show. What you probably didn't know about Mitch is that she is the first black woman in the history of Texas realtors to concurrently hold two of her positions. We also have Latoria Lemon, who has been responsible for national campaigns for some big names such as Drake and Beyonce. Terry Thomas, who has held the operations director position for Radio One here in Houston for over a decade. And Amy Malkin, who created a hub space for creative women to feel supported. Glad to have you all here. Thank Tara, you. I can't believe we got you out the house. <laughs> you know, it's today is, is International <laughs> Women's Day, Women's Day, Terry's turn. There, there you go, there Terry's you go. Turn. So many of you are at the top of your game. Was it a difficult struggle to get there? Let's start with you, Terry. Absolutely. I call myself one of the 12 percenters. So for the position that I hold in radio and the music business in general, it's a, a business that focuses on women but doesn't always have women calling the shots. Mm -hmm. So in the position that I hold, there's only 12 percent of us that are women. But most radio stations have a target demographic that actually is women. So definitely uh, a tough climb. Have you ever faced any pushback from men in the industry? I know uh, in radio you get a lot of reps from record mm -hmm. companies coming to your station. Yeah. Did you ever face any pushback at all? I think both. I think because there were so few women when I started my career in the business, I had some men that actually invested, but absolutely along the way, definitely pushed back. For example, I might be standing somewhere with Jay Mack, who's been on here plenty mm -hmm. of times, and you know JQ, who's my right hand. I could be standing there and people will talk to them about their music and I, I'm the one that calls the shot, you know. <laughs> or it's Dumb Mr. Asses. Mr. Thomas, <laughs> right? And I'd like to speak to Mr. Thomas, right. you know. So yeah, I th that's part of the game. Mm -hmm. And you know, you learn to have a thick skin. And I think for me, I learned very early on in the business that, you know, what you know. So make sure that your skills, working on your skill sets and always elevating your skill sets. And I always tell people, you don't have to like me, you don't have to believe in me, but let me see me on that field because I'm going to go at you toe to toe with skill sets and brain power all the time. And so, you know, it's kind of gutting it out the old fashioned way. And Amy, how important is it to give women that space so they can develop themselves and get into that professional environment? and run the place. Yes, uh, you know, I'm an artist and muralist, so I get to paint on big walls and I'm on scissor lifts and cherry pickers. Uh, and it is a very male dominated field. Uh, and so when I started in the game around 13 years ago, I'm, I'm the baby in the group, but uh, <laughs> um, I, you know, I didn't get that support immediately from the artist and muralist community. I had to prove through skill set and professionalism and I just want to help other female artists and muralists to start ahead, ahead more than I did and so that they can, they can flourish in the field. And so it's really important for me to create a space for them to feel supported whether they want to do it as a hobby or they want to do it professionally full time. This group is for anyone who identifies as female and as a creative and we're here to support you in any way. And Latoria, for many decades, the public relations business has been a male, a white male dominated industry. How were you able to break in and set yourself apart? Absolutely, so I started public relations uh, about 12 years ago in Atlanta, Georgia when I was 19. And so uh, during that time, it was not very likely to see a young lady like me working for TNT and OWN Network and all types of uh, major projects. And so I found that Although I was sitting at the table, sometimes I wasn't necessarily heard at the table. Mm -hmm. So I had to make sure my work spoke for itself, no matter what environment what I was in. What does that do to you internally, not being mm -hmm. heard? You know what, it, it can affect your confidence at times, especially when you're so young. So I was 19 and really had to say, okay, this is something I want to do. I'm gonna stand my ground, I'm gonna be pleasant, I'm gonna be professional, but I'm also gonna allow my work to speak for itself, no matter what the environment was. So as I've progressed, although I'm a publicist, I'm still in entertainment, mm -hmm. which is still a male dominated industry. Mm -hmm. And there's times where I have to um, make sure that I over deliver just so that I can be, uh, accounted for. And Miss, you have been a, a trailblazer in your industry for quite some time now. You're not only out there selling major corporate entities, but also you are educating people. What has been your struggle there as a voice, a teacher, someone who's guiding young minds? 
I'm gonna take this back to my mom. She cracked me up. She started with me when I started my real estate school here in Texas, and it's the only one that focuses exclusively on commercial real estate education. My mom comes in with me to start helping me get the business going, and she sees that the only people in the room are white men, and she's like, oh my God, they're going to attack my child. <laughs> you know, she was worried Just because- no peace. <laughs> she was worried that no one looked like me. She's like, oh my God, are you gonna be okay? And it was just, mom, I got this. Let me go ahead and get in here and do this, trust me, because when I did finally get started, it was after almost about maybe 17 years of having to fight and go through the mm -hmm. same things that every last one of these women have mentioned. Um, there are, you've got your 12% number, fewer than 1% mm -hmm. of the executive level people in the corporate commercial environment are black women, mm -hmm. less than 1%. Wow. I don't even, that's not even a number. Mm -hmm. And so I've had to fight and struggle, but it's been worth it. But I'm telling you, it didn't come without some tears. Mm -hmm. You know, some people who listened, thank God to any of you who listened to me over the years. It was rough, including my pastor at the time. Mm -hmm. It was rough. Well, we want to thank you ladies for joining us here on The Factor on Sense of Congratulations on the great careers you have. Thank and you. we will continue to watch you. Thank you for joining thank us here you. on thank The Factor. Thank you.